What's up folks? Welcome back to my shop. So, as we were talking about before, um, with the brake and everything, I had, I had planned on bending this to make a chip tray. This is the piece I've selected. Uh, it's plate just 16 gauge uh, mild steel plate. So, I had planned on actually bending this on, on my brake, but... Uh, so, after a bit of research, I actually did find a very good uh, article, or downloaded a PDF from VintageMachinery.org. Uh, they had a very good description of the uh, Brown Boggs number 101 and a 102. Uh, and they had all the capabilities and all the attachments and stuff. They're like There used to be a, you can get little little clamping bars or something for these. Or there's a reinforcement bar that will allow you to bend 20 gauge at the full 42 inch length. So that being said, uh, without that reinforcing bar, I can't even bend 20 gauge. So that's unfortunate. So yeah, it really only leaves me one way of doing this now. I guess uh, we'll have to do some scoring with the grinder. And I'll have to score the lines in there and then take it to the brake. So I guess we'll get to it. Alright, so you see I scribed the lines down here. Now you got your, uh, to accommodate your compound angle. And then since this uh, lip here is going to be on the same plane as that, it's just a plain old 45. Then you only mark your half, half inch mark where your bend is on the other side. And you should end up with a profile like that. You know, mind you, that one's a little bit bent up. But, uh, you get the idea. I hope. <laughs> Got to multiply that by four and we're off to the break. Oh, it'd be nice if this was on a bench. <laughs> yeah, we are we are very bench uh, diff deprived in this show. <laughs> I might actually have to take that back guard off now. Oh, no. oh. I don't know if it's even tight. Nope, she just still wants to push in in the middle there. Uh, okay, trying something else here. Uh, that might be okay. Uh, that's a tough bend, yeah. Uh, all right, well, I gave it another shot with the grinder, thinned it out a bit more yet. And I managed to get one side bent up. Uh, we'll try to. Well, either way, we're gonna have a bitch get it out of there afterwards. But well, not this way. But it's harder to line up here. That's all. So hopefully, it's thin enough this time. 
a smoother bend, you kind of just got to freaking get rough with it, I guess. See, this little part back here actually used to be a stopper. I believe there was a piece of cast that came around here and connected down there. And you could put a screw in here somewhere. And that would actually be your guide for, uh, you know, bending a 45 or a 35 or whatever degree angle you need to bend. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to be able to do that with this guy. <laughs> But it does look like we're making headway. At least that went a lot better than that first one. Now, I don't know, I'm probably going to have to bend these guys back some more too now, I guess. I think I'm going to have to cut these ends off just to, uh, I'm not going to be able to bend that on this brake. So I'll probably have to cut those off. I'll bend this lip in there. But, uh, and then I'll have to just weld them on again. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see if this works. I might have to, I didn't hit these again with the grinder. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to, most likely. I'm sure there's some kind of lesson to be learned here. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bolt your shit down, I guess. I made some uh, quick legs for it. Well, not that quick, I guess, but quick enough they'll do the job for till I get it on a real bench. I went ahead and I cut the ends off there because they're just kind of causing problems. Hopefully this thing is still set up right. Without, without without even using a brake after you score it you can technically just bang it where you want it and that's not a 45 so I'm going to pick that a little bit more push it a little bit brighter over here but at least now I got those casters on there I can move this thing around if I have to and it's much much more stable than it was. Oh, that's close. That should be good. It works pretty good once you get the, uh, <laughs> the right thickness of metal in there. <laughs> okay. Much more stable too, so that's good. All right, how's that looking? Not too bad. I hit these with the grinder a bit more as well. Oh yeah, this is actually much better. It's higher off the ground now. Way better. Yeah, I don't know why I fucking worked on that pallet. It's just lazy, I guess. So much right on. There you go. That's all I was supposed to do. <laughs> huh? All right, just a couple little pieces here. These guys are pretty basic. Should have no problem with these. Should 
shouldn't, unless I get my thumb caught in there. That'd be awesome. We didn't even need to score these little guys. She bent, she bent that little stuff, no problem. Just to get a proper view in here at least. That should do nicely. Let me look really close in here. And then we can you know, pop that off there. Look really close. It actually penetrated nearly almost all the way through the whole way. So I'm not even going to worry about these little uh, gaps in here anyway. I think it'll be just fine. Yeah, that one went way all the way through. But once it's buried in oil and chips, you'll never even know it's there. Yeah, I think that's good enough. As long as it does its job. All right, well, I guess it's time. Time for the big reveal. And it's covered in a dog blanket. <laughs> May I present to you the new lathe bench. Huh? My friend Mike laminated all the pieces I cut. I'll show some pics of all the all the cutting and stuff I did with this stuff. He uh, laminated it all together and planed it off. And that is one kick-ass top for lathe bench. This is why I need this here. And the lathe. We'll go on now. Oh, that's good. Oh my God, that looks freaking awesome. Now, <laughs> the arduous task of getting that lathe up there in the first place. You know, you may be, you may be wondering how I got a 500 pound brake off of that pallet by myself. Yeah, it was with that thing, <laughs> for the most part, some blocks. The lathe, well, that's a whole other story. Huh. Well, in spite of all the trials and tribulations, Pan turned out not too bad. You know, I think so anyway. It'll do the job. Uh, these are the bolts I plan on using for bolting that sucker down. But until then, you know, I thought about, uh, you know, pre-drilling the holes. 
But I kind of want the lathe on there before I do that, just to double to make damn sure that it all goes on there properly. Because it's a little, little tricky to, to measure out. Not impossible, like I was going to drill this out just a scotch oversized anyway, just so it's not, uh, hence the washers, right? As long as it's holding down to the bench really good. And it's going through the top of the table, plus another another stud underneath that yet, so it's going to need a lot of bolt. <laughs> hence, I'd like to go a little oversized. Well, time to clean up for the night. Hope you guys, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Do, uh, yeah, don't do what I say either. You guys have a good night. Peace out.